Namaste Angels, I'm here to do the weekly love reading and this should be pretty interesting because in the general reading there was no air. So like no conflict, um, no mental anguish, no anxiety. The only air that showed up was in the form of my Mercury card, which represents communication. So that's good air. And my Venus card, which represents love and abundance. So that's good air. Um, I think that may, oh, and the overall energy of the star, um, which represents, again, communication and wishes granted, prayers answered. So that's good air, but there was no other air anywhere to be seen or felt, just earth. Uh, so money, coins, um, water, cups, so love and emotion, and a little dash of fire, like, a little sprinkle of fire just to kick it up a notch passion wise. But then I came here and I was shuffling the hashtag creepy deck and I saw control obstacles, old man or whatever it's called. It's the card with the gray haired man, um, fair or light skinned man. Yeah, I think it's fair man or something. Saw him. And the brunette female. Now, I got to tell you a little story about the fair-skinned male. But the brunette female, normally when I see her, she represents not necessarily a person. It can be a person with the darker energy, right? She's dark. Her hair's dark. She's got these green eyes, like the green-eyed devil or green with envy, right? Somebody that's jealous of you or something like that. But today, um, I said, you know, she could actually represent, when I saw her, I said, you know, maybe she's here for some of the br actual brunettes. I mean, because normally we can, the, who represents the team light, represents team light. And that applies to all of us, you know, regardless of the hair color and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but this time I was like, maybe brunette female is some of us, um, like with a twist, like we're feeling extra sassy. Or, or something. So that made it apply. After her, it was actually when I saw the fair man, I said, oh, here we go. Here's this dude. Because he represents, um, although he's fair, he represents like the temptation energy to me too. Um, Saturn, you know, the darker energy, the devilish energy. Um, I did have one of my girlfriends today contacting me about two like exes that had popped up in her life and I have one that's actually that's an actual fair-skinned male or well, fair male I forget how, how they listed fair-skinned fair-haired fair-eyed green eyes you know just light he's just light <laughs> um you know but I had cut off all contact and communication he's been blocked for oh I don't know over a year I mean I've spoken to him a couple times like he came around the block um and I guess I was meant to answer or whatever. Like he called me from a different phone, an unknown number or something. And I answered. So I guess I was meant to answer in those, on those occasions, you know, for whatever needed to play out to play out. But aside from that, I had cut off communication. So my, his texts to me are blocked. His phone calls to me are blocked. We had been um, Facebook friends up until... A month or two ago probably and the whole time he was on restricted and you know like no messages and all that kind of stuff um but we recently recently disconnected completely and um you know i hadn't heard from him to be, to be expected i shouldn't hear from him with all that blocking going on and then all of a sudden yesterday or the day before yesterday it doesn't matter I felt him. I felt like he had been, like he was trying to reach me. And I looked in my phone and sure enough, May 28th, which I think was the last time, that last week that I used this deck and saw the fair skin male. And I said, watch out for this, tempt this tempting energy. Um, he had called me four times. From, the from his number that's blocked, so it didn't come through. I didn't know. Um, 
So seeing that again today and then getting the text from my girlfriend that two of hers popped up, that energy circling yet again. So beware, ladies and gentlemen, um, unless you want to take somebody up on something from the past, which is your prerogative to do as well. So with that, I'm going to begin with new love and opening to past life. New love back. Today is Friday the 9th, which is when we are to particularly let things go. Um, upon a full moon, there's Raphael too. Upon a full moon, we, you know, write down, speak into the universe, uh, you know, say in our prayers, make sure we, you know, daydream about what it is of which we want to let go, who it is of which we want to let go. So make sure you do that too with relation to any cords you want to cut specifically today. Up into a wallflower. Opposite the new love. There's that control I saw. Now I did turn up just now upside down. That may mean something. Maybe it's control that's coming to an end. Here's the children. And now they've taken over. I'll go one more. Mature woman. Now she too is brunette with green eyes, but she just doesn't have that like sneaky, sly look that the other one does. This week, there's a lot of spiritual energy in addition to the moon. Sunday, the day for which this reading begins, Sunday the 11th, is the feast day of the Holy Trinity. Um, and that is a celebration of exactly what it sounds like. Here's that mature man I was telling you about. Um, then midweek, the 13th, of course, uh, the goddess Isis's birthday. And I'll probably come back and do something separate for that that goes over general and love energies from, you know, her. And Thursday, the 15th, is the feast day of Corpus Christi. So that's one for Jesus as the Eucharist or an opportunity for us to take in um, the Christ energy, that anointed energy in the form of the Eucharist. That's what's celebrated on that day. Just to give you an idea of like the heightened, um, not just the full moon, this other stuff is going on too. And also on the 16th, I told you Uranus, maybe that's why um, the star was the overall energy in the other reading. Uranus and I think it was Neptune. I think it was Uranus and Neptune that come together. So Pisces and... Aquarius. All right, mature man. Let's get this. Let's get on with this. The overall energy is destiny. Masculine is courting a man. I almost gave away what's in the general in this placement. I'll just say that it's, it's potentially connected. Surrounded by freedom. He's been cutting cords. He's ready to date. And in his subconscious soulmate. Feminine. Passion. This coming through with the energy of the fire, Sagittarius, right? This is um, Jupiter direct, Jupiter, which, reels, which uh, rules Sagittarius and also the Sagittarius full moon right now that we're feeling. That's from where the passion comes. Surrounded by open relationship. You want your relationship out in the open, maybe. No more secrets. There's been a lot of hush hush. This passion wants to be like unleashed, unbridled. Subconscious gifts. 
We may be celebrating something, maybe birthdays. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Yeah, maybe birthdays. Maybe wedding gifts. Maybe you, the two of you on a date to someone's wedding, graduation, a big month for those things. And with this wanting to get out, being free to get out, um, you could be socializing, the two of you. Crowning, fun times. See, told you, socializing. Sitting here next to the recording man. And at the root, dark male. He is the one that comes through of the light all the time. He is the, you know, like uh, tall, dark, and handsome, the, that old saying, that's, this is him. This is the divine masculine. And at the heart of the matter, long distance. Relationships going a long way. People coming back from distance, people that had been distant, now coming back, having the freedom to reach out into the open. I'm going to go on to some romance cards. I was going to look at the at that same deck and do something else with that. But I decided, let me go on to the romance cards. Beginning with engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Open it to love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Engagement and playfulness. Playfulness now at the bottom to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. So very Sagittarius, very Gemini, Piscean, um, Virgo maybe. Open it to this could be the one. You already met the romantic partner you seek. Playfulness, I'll go one more. It's chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. Playfulness, I'm gonna cut. Religious factors, your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. Overall energy is past life relationship. You've known each other before. I also wanna show you how these fell. I just grabbed them like this. So the control, somebody being, you know, handled like a puppet, exposed and true gem. This could be the gift. This could be with relation to a Gemini. The separate little pile that fell neatly, just like this, with triangle topping it. Then I was made to see facing in the opposite direction in this pile. Destiny, which was our overall energy, and the mature woman. So I think the mature woman is someone's destiny out there, whatever she represents. She is the divine feminine. If there's a choice between two people, it is her. And whatever she represents, this could, you know, she could be representing one of these males too. Um, you know, whatever's appropriate for you in your life. And on top of that, she may in fact be a Gemini, this older woman or mature woman, uh, <laughs> which would be weird for a Gemini to be categorized as mature, but possible. Okay. Here atop the courting man, attraction. You attract romantic 
love by enjoying this moment fully. So getting out and enjoying those fun times, courting man that this sits next to. Atop the freedom. Some of you have broken free from a marriage. Some of you are now free to be married or to approach your spiritual marriage how you choose. One way or another, this situation involves marriage. But sitting here atop freedom, it's the freedom to do it or it's the freedom from it. A top soulmate that's in the masculine subconscious. It's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. So this contemplating and remaining a little bit fearful um, to make the approach. It's okay, the angels say. A top passion. Retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. Maybe two, the two of you going somewhere together. Two people together in this car. Two people together in this card. Wearing that wedding attire, by the way. The top open relationship. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. Like the fact that you want to go public or that you don't. The dynamic of relationship that you want for you um, as a couple. Talk about it. Decide together. Atop the gifts. True love. This is the romance of a lifetime. So it's the gift of abundance. It's the you know abundant love and maybe even some material things coming your way to help this relationship to flourish. Top the fun times. They're fun because you're playful and youthful. To recapture that romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. This encourages us to get out and enjoy the warm weather, Mother Nature, Venus out there, all of that. Here at the root, atop the dark male, honeymoon, enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. This could mean special things for this weekend, right? Under the honeymoon while it still, you know, shines down on, on us. Or, you know, anytime throughout the week, well, it doesn't have to be this weekend. We're going to feel the energy of this honeymoon um, for the next like two weeks, many of us. There also may be an actual holiday um, that some of us are celebrating, depending, depending where we are in the world. Some of us could be celebrating uh, Shabbat. Some of us could be celebrating, it's not really a holiday, but these graduations, these, you know, end of school, all that kind of stuff, the start of summer. Here at the heart of the matter, atop the long distance, reconciliation, someone from your past, is returning to your life. So just as I was saying before, someone returning from a distance, someone that had been distant coming back or and or the relationship going the distance, going a long way. Recon that, all of that can happen. All that's possible with reconciliation. I want to do advice, but then I don't because I didn't do the cross. So everybody get a good look at this. I'm sure this is what they're most concerned. And notice, just as I've been saying for months, the reconciliation sitting here atop the honeymoon. Okay, this moon energy bringing wonderful, wonderful things to the light bringer, light worker community, to divine unions. All right, with that, I'm going to take this up so that I can... Do a, get a cross going. And for that cross, I'm beginning with relationship. And this beautiful blue angel and Raphael outside and these twin dolphins that may be in a relationship too. Open it to meditation under like this moonlight. Relationship divine guidance under more moonlight this very infinite amount of guidance that's available to us and it never ceases that's the relationship that we have with god the relationship we have with the universe the relationship we have with the angels with the ascended masters it is ongoing for all eternity relationship open into tantric union Relationship. One more. <laughs> Sacred union. How you like that? In this very blue um, 
Again, angel opposite these very blue divine partners here together. Aww. And love. Wouldn't it have been horrible if I didn't do this spread? We've already, I mean, haven't done anything yet, but we've already gotten tantric union, sacred union, relationship, and love. And all of that followed wedding, honeymoon, and reconciliation. I mean, this is like going to be an awesome week. Um, again, the general was evident of that too. Not a sword to be seen. The overall energy is listening, which represents for me more Aquarius. So maybe because of Uranus, that activity um, with this star here. The card also about what it looks like, um, paying attention, following attentively the messages, the guidance, that divine guidance um, that's available to us so infinitely, actually listening to it, not ignoring it, following it, including the placements, the modified portions of the cross, my cross. <laughs> I, I still got to put myself in the habit of that, not the cross. Um, my cross, my copyrighted cross, legally copyrighted cross that you are, you know, free to use as long as you identify it as my cross, the same way you would the Celtic cross, uh, these placements for the Marys, <laughs> Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and Mary, the mother, um, no, Mary Magdalene. Okay. The, um, Divine masculine with regard to the feminine as she relates to the union. Blessings with more Mother Mary. Sitting here right atop Mary's placement. How beautiful is that? The divine masculine sees the feminine as the gift. So remember the other spread and I said that this gift can be itself be the true love. That's how the masculine is viewing the feminine. That she, his true love is in fact the gift, the blessing herself. No, that's how the feminine is feeling about herself. I said, well, now I did it. Now I said it. I had my hand over and I said the masculine about her. So I have to leave it like that. I have to leave it with the masculine about her and make this the feminine about herself in relation to the union. Okay. Creativity and more Aquarius and more moon. So taking in the Maybe we're surrendering to our feminine energy. Also, this card very much signifying what's going on this week. When I said um, on the 16th, Uranus and Neptune coming together. Aquarius. Pisces. See these fish here? So maybe this is significant not only throughout this period of the honeymoon, um, for the feminine, but specifically midweek, us really getting our creative juices uh, flowing and our passions unleashing the masculine with regard to himself. Inner child. So he is working on this um, inner healing, healing of himself. He may be alone is what I'm feeling you know, having cut cords. And so he may be spending some time by himself um, in order to get to know himself. This is real introspection going on. Beautiful. Has to do with humanitarianism too. There's like an inner, there's something attached to, maybe it's his youthful spirit also. But it's, it has something to do with the way he wants to contribute to the greater good. With his creativity, maybe this is why I got mixed up. Everything's always for a reason. It has something to do with the masculine's creativity too. Um, and the way that he wants to uh, share himself with humanity. He has to first visit this inner child, this youthful spirit within himself in order for that to be sort of unleashed. 
also. The masculine with regard to the union. Abundance. This is abundance in all forms. Um, so he just thinks like the, the union is like a wealth of everything. Awesomeness. A wealth of often awesomeness. A pot of gold. You know, it's abundant love. He, it opens his flows. So abundant material, abundant finances. You know, everything gets flowing in addition to maybe creative juices that help the couple to, you know, become abundant on this plane in the physical sense, monetary sense. But above that, we unblock our blessings. We unblock our blessings when we achieve, when we come together in this union, basically. Overall, emergence rising from the ashes look how bright yellow this is all uriel god's light shining down upon them there's some white light here like the christ light too no darkness which means the darkness must be below that must be from what we're emerging we're leaving that behind moving on to greater things being come being coming strengthened because we've gotten into this place of full vulnerability before the universe we're completely naked and bare before the universe allowing us to feed us with its healing to nourish us with its healing and that is helping us to rise and elevate and continue to ascend. Helping this child to grow up too. Outcome. Tantric union. This is the 5D that emerges from all of this. The 5D connection emerges upon the ascension. How super awesome. And um, what can, what, is, what would the masculine have the feminine do to do or surrender toward um, this union forgiveness he wants her to begin with her begin with herself but then like, like please extend him the olive branch and everyone else too um you know against which she's been harboring blame and resentment and because it's hurting her he can't stand to watch her in that kind of pain that not forgiving brings. So he wants her to do this. These things have been coming through so strong. Um, since that moon reading, they gave me like that jolt. This one is very, very strong too. Not, not like that, but I, I can feel really what the masculine is saying here. Like how it's painting him to watch her react and act like based off of past hurt and things that she's holding on to, you know, against him, maybe against his quote unquote karmic, um, or anybody else that was a block, his mother, his friends or whatever, but against herself too, things she could have did differently that she didn't like crying over the spilled milk, the old woe was me, the five of cups. And, you know, maybe if I had just done this, and maybe if I had just done that, he wants her to let it all go. Okay, what was the masculine willing to do um, or sacrifice toward the union himself? Physical body. This is him, again, sort of basking, bathing in this yellow light of Uriel. God's light. This orange light of Ariel. This is healing the solar plexus, the sacral chakra. And then throughout, only because he was willing to get into a completely vulnerable and relaxed position. Look at this woman. She's like, she's like about to go to sleep, basically. I mean, that's how relaxed and soothed she is. He had to go all the way in to this place. That's how he's rising like this. This is sort of when you first come up for air from the darkness. And then after you've allowed for this healing, then you can, you grow your, you sprout your wings and you can head up to heaven. But this has to be attended to as well. This child. What would the universe have the two um, of the union do? Trilogy of light. Did I mention that Sunday was the feast of the Trinity? This card to me is all about that. It's about the divine feminine and the divine masculine and the universe and the two of them trying as best they can to continue these heights soaring 
further up to these heights to get as close to the Christ consciousness um, as they can and or are meant to. So this is like being right on track and the universe saying, just stay on path and continue to elevate, continue to rise, continue to ascend. This is a week of ascension and love. Ah. Advice. I'm going to do some with those. I'm going to do some with these. Maybe I won't do any with these because I, <laughs> I don't even know where the rest of them are. my John Holland psychic tarot of the heart deck beginning with simply love which is like the six of cups and that's why there's this gentleman here with his child six of cups or simply love can relate to soulmate relationships as well however opening to balance this is like temperance in fact it is the same number as temperance in the tarot um, which is about Sagittarius Re temperance represents the sign of Sagittarius and it is about the coming together um, the healing of the divine masculine and feminine um, of an individual and the coming together of a partnership as well opposite the six it equals 20 or 11. So it's really the coming together of a partnership for us. Opening to master. Um, this one sort of about control and like being the master of one's own destiny or being ruled, you know, run around by other people. Our first card reflecting any kind of difficulty and challenges. This one is challenging times. Simply love and opening to clarity or belief. This is like the Ace of Swords. Simply love. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like to come uh, cut into six equals love. And coming to the four. Uh, in this deck, which is like the four of cups and only it has a different meaning. This one's called opportunity beckons. Notice there's more moon too, um, with this infinity symbol as well. And this is really about your opportunities being endless, infinite, um, and guiding us to not to miss them, to reach for the stars. See all these stars surrounding this gentleman. Um, the world like is your oyster, so to speak. And this came up in the, in the full moon reading as well. Going to the romance cards, beginning with heart to heart conversations, opening to getting to know each other. Heart to heart conversations, opening to children. Your love life is being affected by children. Heart to heart conversations. And lastly, forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Heart to heart conversations. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Engagement, the overall energy. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Lovers, universal love oracle, beginning with physical body and opening to miracles. physical body back to relationship with which we started physical body opening to answered prayer 
and physical body, which is that star energy um, from the general, the overall energy. Answered prayer, which is granted. Emergence. Physical body, I'm going to cut. Listening. This was our energy before. Overall energy now is blessings. Lastly, hashtag, hashtag creepy deck beginning with past life. And opening to past love opposite that past life. I think this is an indication of what we're leaving behind with this full moon. Mature man. He may be among those things. The energy of whatever this represents um, may be among what's left behind. Opening to beauty queen. Feeling good about oneself. Maybe like the energy of Venus. Mature man. One more. Brunette female. There she is. She's here opposite this mature man. Maybe she's what's on her way out or what has been released as well. Mature man. Coming to control in that puppeteer and puppet. Overall energy is triangle. Okay, from the hashtag creepy duck to the masculine. Wallflower. Some of you guided to get up and get out, masculine. Do a little socializing this week. No more wallflower. Feminine. Mind on our money, money on our mind, working hard, receiving rewards. This is reaping rewards of all benefits, though. This can be love, too. Um, it's whatever you put your effort and work into, you're getting back what you deserve for that. From the Universal Love Oracle Soulmate Masculine, more underneath the full moon. Here's you got it. It's all happiness. This emerging from a lotus flower, just like Kuan Yin and... <laughs> um, you got this, the sun, you've got the moon, you've got the rainbow, everything beautiful together here. Fem feminine, that's a reason to celebrate, as may be some of you, again, getting married, getting engaged, um, you know, graduating, moving on from different things, receiving promotions, raises, all that three, um, of pentacles, three of coins, it's been coming through for us. You're happy though, and you're celebrating. These could go hand in hand, right? You just got a raise, it's time to celebrate. You've been working hard, whatever that means, even if it's toward the relationship, this is the love reading. So working hard toward the relationship, it's finally, you know, you're reaping the rewards in your favor the way you wanted them, the way you always dreamed. You finally made a decision maybe. If you were the one with the, living in the triangle, you've, you know, finally settled on what it is you want and put the effort toward that and now you're getting in so you're celebrating maybe this is who <laughs> from the romance angel to the masculine Ooh, deception i will pull another card for you someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship and i didn't get the indication of that from any of the other cards so i want to see what that is and feminine love yourself first your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive this can certainly go with the triangle um letting go of this that's right behind it control or the control that people may have on you and instead living and or loving for yourself from the john holland crown chakra to the feminine the need to work on clearing that, maybe some blocks. Maybe we got to put our crown back on like the masculine had to in the full moon reading. And from the John Holland to the 
masculine. It's six. I started with like a six of cups um, kind of card. And this is six as in the lovers. This is like the major arcana of that deck to the masculine. He's got soulmate and he's got love. His deception may be that he's in one of these situations and he hasn't for those that haven't yet picked or those who haven't yet brought themselves out into the open or even admitted it to themselves yet. Maybe they're not even up to that step. That can be what this is, but I'm going to take um, the next available card for the, from the romance angels. This one is upside down. This one is upside down, upside down. Here we go. Romantic feelings. So this is what he's pretending doesn't exist. Um, He's got a mask on. He hasn't even admitted it to himself in some cases that his feelings are real and worth exploring. But now he knows because he's already feeling it. And I am seconding, seconding it along with the help of the romance angels for him. I hope that you guys enjoyed the love reading. I know it was bizarre and sort of ass backwards. And but, you know, there's a reason for everything. I don't know what the reason was for that yet. Uh, we don't need one. Screw it. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Namaste.